Welcome back to the Happy Hour presented by Comcast Business. It must be a Thursday. Our must friend be. Steve Moskowitz is here. Greg Papa, Ray Raddle. We were just talking about the uh, female reporter in Charlotte, Jordan Rodrig. I think is the correct, uh, correct pronunciation. Jordan Rodrig. She's covered the uh, Panthers the last couple of years. One of two beat writers. We were wondering about beat writers. The, beat writers. What do they say? Beat writers. Oh, beat writers. Sorry. You Jordan, see, beat I was, writers. I was stumbling you on up, Jordan you Rodrig. Out of a job. He hangs on every word I say. He's such a writer. Uh, Sounds like a lawyer. He is. He's, is well, it's, okay, I'm leaving now. No, uh, <laughs> hang on, I need your expertise. Not that offended. We, we were talking about the workplace and, and the environment here. Just from a legal standpoint, does Jordan have any any mechanism against Cam Newton at all here? Not a practical one. The, the, the real problem here is the PR endorsements, like Ray was saying, other teams if he slips. It, it's uh, stupid, offensive, shouldn't have done it, it was bad. But would he have to worry about a court of law? No. Um, how is the workplace defined, though, in this situation? Is a press room in a, in a, in a building run by a football team, is that technically a workplace oh, for the writers? Yeah. So, Even out in the field would be a workplace for them. So uh, anywhere, you, you, anywhere, that you're, anywhere that you are allowed to be to do your work, that is your workplace? Essentially, yes. Okay. What, what if it got so bad? And the Charlotte Observer, the Observer in Charlotte that she covers the Panthers for, felt that, you know, you're not getting along with the quarterback of the team. We're going to have to take you off, off the beat because for whatever reason, he, she's not going to, you know, because he's getting so much backlash. Would she have any backlash towards him? That, I mean, I mean, Not him, because he didn't do it to her. It would be her employer. She'd probably sue him for wrongful termination. Well, I mean, is there any way she could bring up a slander charge with him? Would she, and she's not really, a, is she a public figure? Being a, a sports writer like other so, public figures? Somewhat. But the other thing is, if you said, do I think he committed slander? No, because he wasn't even saying, yeah. you know nothing. He was saying he was surprised that a woman, and again, he acknowledged that she knew it, but he was surprised for a woman. A judge would throw that out in a second. He probably sanctioned the lawyer that brought it. Is um, the, 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 the notion that, you know, that there, there's no practical... Uh, there's no practical way to to for her to bring an action if she wanted to. On what would it fall? I mean, how how would the judge go? You're not don't bring that here. What point of law prevents that from from being a useful a useful tool? Because what he someone? because what he did doesn't rise to the level of what's called the cause of action. You can't sue him for saying something offensive. But where she if she wanted to do something, you know that could hurt. The team in the way of you know fans are saying look we're upset with what you're doing endorsements that's where it is now if you're talking about money you know if you don't get an endorsement or something that is big bucks that would be way more than you would win in a court of law that's not his his problem his problem is how is that going to adversely affect his career because it really could I mean you've basically insulted half the population more than half. Uh, Dan and Yogurt, we were talking earlier, uh, he, he does uh, endorse their product. Now, they're still going to pay him, but they're not going to have him endorse their product anymore. That's, that's their choice. I mean, they, but they still have to pay him. Is there, is there a, a, a threshold he could cross here where he would violate some term of their agreement where they would no longer be obligated to pay him? Oh, sure. I'm, I'm sure that the contract was carefully thought out, and there's probably a morals clause. This would not invoke a morals clause. For example, if he said, you know, you're a woman, you don't belong here, and he punched her, <laughs> they wouldn't be paying him, and they'd be out of that contract. So this is certainly less than a punch. Well, what if he said, you're a woman, you don't belong here, and then that, that will prevent her from doing her job? She's going to have to be removed from her job. Maybe and maybe not, and maybe, you know, again, it depends how he plays. If he plays real well, he can get away with some things he shouldn't. But as Ray was saying, if he slips or in the endorsements, that is where a player is really going to be hurt in those endorsements financially. And even in the court of law, what are, you, what are you going for? You're going for money. He could really lose some money here. You know, he didn't think and he did the wrong thing. Now, what he should do if I was his lawyer is I'd say, look, you know, go apologize to her and then do something to make up for it, like make a contribution to women's sports or go to some sensitivity training or go and speak to some guys and say, look, you know what? I used to think this way, and I'm really sorry that it, like the gang members. 24 hours later, I've had an epiphany. Well, no, no, not an epiphany, but sometimes it takes a while for somebody to think they've done something wrong, especially if they have a belief. And you would have a lot of people that it would take way more than 24 hours to change your belief. But that's what I would do if, he was, if I was his lawyer, and then this would blow or we'd be forgiven. This country likes to forgive. 
Well, this country likes to judge apologies, is what it likes to do. They, they want to see the apology, and then they want to judge whether it's sufficiently sincere, which and is a whole different... Well, once again, you know, your lawyer's there helping you out. The other Zoom. side, I want to bring up your buddy Roger Goodell, <laughs> the uh, commissioner. I, I don't think the league has any reason to suspend him, but I, I do, you know, this is a player that was not allowed to start a football game last year because he merely did not wear a necktie on, on, the, on the ride of the, the game. And they didn't, they benched him for the start of the game. So I'm going to be interested to see what Jerry Now, with said. Roger, you know, his rules are pretty much do what he wants, see if he gets sued. He's not going to do anything here. But it is it's bad business to insult him. That, that's it. It's bad business. This is business. It's not really a legal topic. It's a business topic. It's horrific for business. All right, Mr. Moskowitz, thank you for Always your time. Always a pleasure. It is a Thursday. It is an appearance by our uh, legal expert on the happy hour, Steve Moskowitz. What do you got, Chris Sims coming up? Chris Sims. What are you guys talking about this week? Um, well, just how much more the Pittsburgh Steelers and Antonio Brown can endure. <laughs> the Gatorade Coolers coming on the field.